Hello and good evening to our triumphant Tuesdays in the Word. Let's get our Bible and uh, let's go right to our holy text. Uh, chapter 56 of the book of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter number 56. And uh, we're going to look at verse number one and verse number two. That is the 56th chapter coming to us from the Old Testament book of Isaiah. Looking at verse number one and verse number two. And I'm reading this to you from the English Standard Version of God's Holy and Divine Word. Listen at what his word says. It says, Thus says the Lord, keep justice and do righteousness, for soon my salvation will come and my righteousness be revealed. Blessed is the man who does this and the son of man who holds it fast, who keeps the Sabbath, not profaning it, and keep his hand uh, from doing any evil. This is the word of God for the people of God, uh, and we say thanks be unto God. Let us take our Bible and uh, let us make our statement of faith here on tonight, our Bible our, or your electronic device. Um, that has your copy of God's holy and divine word. And let's make our statement of faith with you repeating after me. Um, this is my Bible. I believe what it says. I can have what it says that I can have. I can be what it says I can be. And I can do what it says I can do. Amen. Bless the name of the Lord. Isaiah chapter 56 verses number one and verse number two uh, again for our those that have just joined us our scripture it says thus says the lord keep justice and do righteousness for soon my salvation will come and my righteousness be revealed blessed is the man who does this and the son of man who holds it fast who keeps the Sabbath, not profaning it, and keeps his hand from doing any evil. Those two verses are, are what we're going to look at here on tonight. We want to look at a few, um, a few nuggets out of these two verses as we um, hear what the word of God is saying to these people and what, he, what he's saying to us uh, here on today or what this word says to us here on today. And uh, I, want to, I want to utilize as our controlling thought influenced by what he will do influenced by what God will do influenced by what God will do on um, these two verses they open up this 56 chapter and they give two simple instructions the first instruction that it gives there number one is keep justice the second instruction instruction that it gives is to do righteousness this prophet, this prophet and this prophetic word, um, he is speaking on behalf of God um, and he's speaking on behalf of God. And, and these words, they are directed to God's um, disobedient and discouraged people. This word, it is it is it's the prophet. He's speaking on behalf of God and he and he's speaking to God's uh, disobedient and his discouraged people. They see these people, they see no reason in their present context. They see no reason um, as long as things uh, look the way that they look. Um, they see no reason to repent. They see no reason to line up with God's word. As long as they were in their current context, they saw no reason for themselves to take it a turn and to, um, to repent and to do what thus says the Lord. And so what, what God does is he takes and he... Um, he, he shakes them out of this state of unwillingness to to repent and and he calls them. He calls them and he calls them um, right where they are located he, and he calls them. Don't miss that part right where they're located in captivity. He calls them to justice, to keep justice and to do righteousness. I want to look at these two things um, as to what God is, is, is saying unto them to do. Uh, because I do believe that there is a word enveloped there for us here on today. Um, here, here it is. Number one, he tells them to keep justice, to keep justice, 
he tells them to keep justice. And when we look at um, him telling them to keep justice, I told you earlier, keep in mind that God, he shakes them out of this uh, reluctance uh, to be to repent and to do um, to do what God tells them to do. He shakes them out of this by giving them um, these two simple instructions to keep justice and to do righteousness. Now, now, now he tells them this while they are in captivity. Um, he tells them to keep justice and do righteousness. And he tells them, instructs them to do this while they're presently in a location where they are suffering injustice. So God gives them them this instruction to keep justice, but yet they are suffering injustice. And, and, and God, he says a few things earlier about where they're located. Um, and he tells them that this place that they're at in Isaiah 51 and verses number four and five, um, God tells them to give attention to me, my people, and give ear to me, my nation. For a law will go out from me, and I will set my justice for, uh, for a light to the people. Uh, my righteousness draws near, and my salvation has gone out, and my arms will judge the peoples, and the, coast, the coastlands hope for me. And for my arm, they wait. So just looking at that particular passage of scripture in Isaiah 51 verses 4 and 5, uh, we see through the language of God that where they are located, um, that they are starving for justice. They are starving for justice. They are, they, are, they are starving for righteousness. They are starving for light in the midst of their darkness. And so here in this 56th chapter, uh, with that being the context and on the backdrop, God tells them in spite of all of that, he tells them to keep um, to keep justice, to keep justice. They were in a place um, where where those that oppress them were not treating them with justice. However, God, he gives them the instruction to keep justice. This is not the first time uh, in this prophecy um, that God instructs them to keep justice. Uh, let's take your Bible, go over to Isaiah chapter one and verse number 17. Listen at what it said. It said, learn to do good, seek justice, correct oppression, bring justice uh, to the fatherless, uh, plead uh, the widow's cause. Then you go over to that same Isaiah chapter one, uh, verse number 27. Listen at what God says. He says, Zion shall be redeemed by justice. And those in her who repent by righteousness. Uh, go to Isaiah chapter 32 and verse number 16. Listen at what God says. Then justice will dwell in the wilderness and righteousness abide in the fruitful field. Um, so God, he, he, he instructs them throughout this book um, to keep justice, to keep justice. And that word that word uh, justice, uh, it is this Hebrew word, uh, uh, mishpat in the Hebrew. And the idea in the Old Testament is an action that promotes the well-being and equality of all humanity. So the, the Old Testament idea of justice is this action that takes and promotes the well-being and equality for all of humanity. It means, what it means is to act with care in exercising judgment. Act with care in exercising judgment with faithfulness. And, and justice, brothers and sisters, is grounded in responsible and merciful governance. Justice is grounded in responsible <clears throat> and merciful governance. And this theme, this theme, this theme of, of, of justice, um, it takes and it shows up in other areas, uh, areas of the Bible. Listen at what God says through the prophet Hosea in Hosea chapter 12 and verse number six. He says, so you, by the help of your God, return, hold a fast to love and justice and wait continually for your God. Wait continually for your God. So, so, so here in our particular passage of scripture, here were these people. They were in captivity. 
they were, they were being treated unfairly, but God tells them to keep justice. There's a lesson, there's a lesson here, there's a lesson here that takes and it teaches them, as well as it teaches us, that watch this, how other, others treat you should not determine how you treat them. Let me say that again. Now, let me say that again. They are in, they are, they are being oppressed. They are in captivity. And the people who have them in captivity and who have oppressed them, they're not treating them fairly. They're not treating them with any type of justice. But then here comes God telling them while they are in captivity to keep justice. Man, to a degree, you almost have to say, God, you must be out of your mind. But the lesson is, is that um, how others treat you should never, ever determine how you treat them. In other words, because you are a child of God, you won't wait till someone treats you fairly before you treat them fairly. Because you are a child of God, you will not wait for, uh, for others to treat you right before you treat them right. You, 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 it, you, yeah, because you are a child of God, this is the high level of living that a child of the Lord has to ascribe to. And so and so he tells them in the midst of their oppression, in the midst of them not being treated right. God tells them to keep justice during. He tells them to keep justice during this time where 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 we um, have experienced um, the creeping out of the dark corners of these United States of America where racism has reared its demonic head God is saying to us that are the victims of racism keep justice um, when, when unfair hiring practices are being um, um, being uh, perpetuated um, within our city and within our county or wherever you may be God is saying, you as my child, you keep justice. Don't let how the world, how the system and how other people treat you dictate and determine how you treat them. Don't allow for a friend that's supposed to be a friend, but yet they treat you with cruelty. Don't you allow for that to influence how you treat them. Don't you allow how others treat you, dictate and determine how you, you're supposed to be a child of God. You know, that's what the world will say. Um, that's what the world will say. And at times, brothers and sisters, that's a statement like that. When people say, oh, you're supposed to be a child of God. That should take and shake us and pull us from a low point point when people uh, misuse us and abuse us and bring us low. Um, um, like uh, former First Lady Michelle Obama said, listen, when they go low, um, um, you go high. And, 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 and here God says, keep justice. You guys are, are in captivity. They are treating you badly, treating you wrong, treating you unfairly, treating you uh, without justice. But God says to them, you keep you keep justice. Don't you treat them unjustly. Don't treat them the way that they are treating, treating you. God says to these people, no matter what others are or are not doing, that those that belong to him must keep justice. That is what God is saying uh, to us here on today. And so even for my brothers and sisters across this country and across the land, um, you know, we don't, we don't, we, we, that are protesting and have protests, we don't protest in an unjust way. We protest justly. We protest justly. Um, just because they treat you one way don't mean you got to treat them the same way that they treat you. So number one here, God instructs them to keep justice, to keep justice. Uh, number two, watch this. He instructs them to do righteousness, to do righteousness. God, he instructs them to do righteousness. And this word righteousness in the Hebrew um, um, is this Hebrew word, uh, uh, sadaka in the Hebrew. And it carries the idea of honesty and justness. It means being 
um, being um, divinely inspired and influenced in doing that which is right. That means that you are um, in uh, what 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 inspires you to do right. Um, it's divine inspiration. It's divine inspiration. And so here they were not being treated right. And yet God tells them um, to do righteousness, to do right. In other words, he says, um, you know, to do right. That's what I, that's what his uh, that's what he's trying to teach them. And this particular lesson here, um, it is akin to the previous lesson and it is connected to it. Um, here, God tells them um, um, to do right, and it teaches them that even if people don't treat you right, you treat them right. I told you it's akin to the first lesson. The first lesson says um, um, that, that no matter how others treat you, you won't allow for, you won't allow for it to influence you. Um, how others treat you should not determine how you treat them. But here, the second lesson is teaching them, even if people don't treat you right, you treat them right. Let me say that one more time. I know that's hard. I know that's a turn off for some of you. Some of you probably have already tuned out because you don't like this. You want to hear, if you treat me bad, I'm going to treat you bad. You lie on me, I'm going to lie on you. You stab me in the back, I'm going to stab you in the back. You run my name through the mud, I'm going to run your name through the mud. That is not the way of Christianity. Because what that says is that I don't trust that God uh, will, will, will repay those that have done his children wrong. Um, you are taking matters into your own hand. And the Bible teaches, the Bible teaches, um, vengeance is mine, thus says the Lord. Um, he says, I will repay. And so then if you ultimately trust in him, um, then no matter how wrong you have been treated, Lord, help me on tonight. No matter how you've been mistreated, Lord, help me on tonight. Um, no matter, no matter, no matter how many times you've been lied on, Lord, don't only help me, but help us all out on tonight. God is saying how others, number one, again, how others treat you should not determine how you treat them. So he says, keep justice. But then secondly, he's saying, even if people don't treat you right, you treat them right. That's why he said, do righteousness. But the question arises, <laughs> the question arises of this text, um, um, why should they, why should they keep justice? Why should they do righteousness? It's a great question to ask. I mean, it's great. I mean, after all, I'm living in captivity. That's a great question to ask of this text. Um, um, uh, living in Babylonian captivity. That's a great question to ask. And you telling me to keep justice and do righteousness? Oh, man, that is a great question to ask. And that's how we must be real and transparent. Be real and transparent with the scriptures and the scriptures will talk back to you. Be real and transparent with God and God will talk back to you. And here is the answer. The answer is found right in the text. Listen at what it says. The B clause of verse number one. He says, for soon my salvation will come. And my righteousness be revealed. So here is the answer. Why should they keep justice? Why should they do righteousness? They should keep justice and do righteousness. Here it is in anticipation of what God will do. So here, here's the influencer. I'm influenced by what God will do. And so and so in, in anticipation of what he will do, um, I'm going to keep justice, not, not, not in anticipation of what they will do. I'm going to keep justice. I'm going to do righteousness. I'm in anticipation of what God will do. Brothers and sisters, do you know, do you not know that God, he is able to take and to turn situations around? Do you not know that God can take a, a mean and bitter heart and sweeten it and soften it up? Do you not know that God can take enemies and turn them into allies? Do you not know that God can take your opposition and create opportunity? God, my brothers and sisters, he is able. 
and in anticipation of what God will do, then we don't mind or should not mind fulfilling his instructions. He says, keep justice and do righteousness. Why should they do it? Well, God tells them, look at your Bible. God tells them uh, in that second verse, he tells them, listen, the reason why you should keep justice and do righteousness, he says, because my salvation will come. My salvation will come and my righteousness be revealed. Um, here in the text, brothers and sisters, God is saying that his, his uh, salvation will come. His salvation will soon come and my righteousness be revealed. His salvation will come. Uh, we got to look at that. We have to look at that. Look at what it says. Um, my salvation. He offers this word salvation to a people who are in captivity. Salvation here, it takes and it suggests um, an extraordinary rescue from the forces that would otherwise continue to overwhelm them forever. Let me say that again. He offers this word salvation. This is what I'm going to do. If you keep justice, if you keep doing right, God says my salvation um, is it, soon. My, my salvation will come. If you would if you would do right, if you would keep justice soon, my salvation will come. He's speaking to people that are in captivity. He says soon my salvation will come. And what this word being offered in this context would suggest to us to us, brothers and sisters, is um, an extraordinary, an extraordinary resource um, from heaven, from forces rather that would otherwise continue to overwhelm them um, forever. And so, so the Lord says to them, keep justice and do righteousness and his, his salvation, his, his deliverance, it will come. God says to them, if you would only, if you would only follow my instructions uh, and my salvation, my deliverance, it will come. If only you do um, what I tell you to do, Salvation is on the on, on the way, on the way. D don't forget this. They are in captivity. And God says, while you're in captivity, do, do justice and do righteousness. While you're in captivity, do justice and do righteousness. If you do it under this oppression, under this trial, under people not treating you right, he says, I'm going to save you from forces that would have ordinarily overwhelm you and that's good news to know saints of God that God is saying that listen if you just do what I tell you to do what I instruct you to do those things that that would would have overwhelmed you would have would have would have would have had the best of you or the greater of you are or, or taken advantage of you blessed be his holy and righteous name God says salvation will soon come uh, saving you from darkness, saving you from difficulty, saving you from depression, saving you uh, from loneliness, saving you from teary eyes. God says his salvation, if you just do what God is hard, do what I say um, for you to do, even in the midst of this oppression, even in the midst of people not treating you right, you do right. Even in the midst of, of people um, not treat, giving you justice, you do justice. Please note that the context of these people, um, they were in Babylonian captivity. And when the Babylonians were gone at the hand of the Persians, they were in Persian captivity. And these people, another thing to take note of in considering this, so you went from Babylonian captivity to Persian captivity. And the reason why they were captive, it was by their own volition. They were the ones that perpetrated, um, perpetuated rather, their captivity. However, here is the remedy for their malady. He says, follow my instructions. Follow these divine instructions. And these divine instructions, they will bring deliverance. Um, no matter who it is um, that that who it is 
that is doing you wrong. If it's the Babylonians or if it's the Persians, he says, if you just follow my instructions, follow my divine instructions and 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 no matter who it is that is oppressing you, God is saying that my salvation will soon come. And 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 and, and check this out. Check this out, brothers and sisters. Um, all they have to do is break their own cycle of 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 an unwillingness to trust God, of an unwillingness to trust God. They were unwilling to trust him because things are so bad. Things are so difficult. How many times in our life we've done that? We're like, oh, is this and oh, is that? Woe is me. And it's this and it's that. Why should I? Why should I pray? Amen, somebody. Why should I pray? Why, why should I fast? Amen, somebody. Why? Why should I read my Bible? It's not doing anything. It's not changing anything. And I'm not saying this uh, from a place in a position of have not having not been there, but I'm saying this from a place in a position of, 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 of finding um, finding God. Here, here, here's my 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 verdict on God. God was slowful in doing what I wanted him to do. And so I I was I was I, I was led astray in my prayer life. Um, was altered because what I wanted to see was not happening. You perhaps have heard me tell that testimony before. Um, it was difficult to read my Bible, difficult to pray, difficult to prepare messages and lessons. And uh, I was somewhat just like the children of Israel. And as long as I was disobedient, I was going to be in captivity. I was going to be captive to my depression, captive um, to my loneliness, captive to my self-destructive ways. Um, but when I realize that victory is found when in, 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 in obedience, when I found that victory was, 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 was enveloped in being influenced by what God said he will do. And if I do my part, God will do his part. And that's what the Lord shares with these people. Um, he, he, he shares with them that, listen, no matter who it is um, that has you captive or what it is, th th there is no restriction on the power of deliverance. Oh, hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. There is no restriction on deliverance. The only restriction on deliverance is enveloped in us. We are the ones that restrict deliverance from coming our way. The text here says to us, brothers and sisters, the text says that he will save them. He says, soon my salvation will come. He said, he, he will soon, my salvation, it will, it, it will soon come. And the question becomes, save them from what? Save them from what? What, what are you, what, what is this salvation that you're going to save them from? This salvation that God speaks of, this deliverance that God speaks of in the text, it is saving them from where they are located, saving them from those that have treated them unfairly and not right, save them from those who are not bringing or giving them justice, saving them from what they were presently going through. And does that not ring delightfully in our ears to know that God will save you from where you're located. But here it is, the salvation, it will not come unless God, unless God, hear me, unless God, uh, no, no, not unless God, but the salvation will not come unless we are obedient to God. Victory, success, salvation is found in our obedience, brothers and sisters. Let me say that again. Victory, salvation, deliverance, it is found in our obedience. And then the good news is also here is that he says it will come. It will come. Somebody ought to type that. It will come. The sal He says soon my salvation, here it is, will come. So here it is, salvation, um, salvation is what they will receive if they keep justice and do righteousness. Salvation is what they will receive. That word will is a powerful and beautiful word, depending on your translation. Sometimes it's translated shall. And utilizing that word typically in the Bible, it comes right before promise. And in and, and what it is, the beauty of it is, is is the guarantee. Um it's it's guaranteeing, it's guaranteeing what is promised to you. 
are as guaranteeing. So that which is on the back end, and in this case, um, it's sandwiched in the middle of what they will receive. But the promise, the promise of it is that it is coming. The promise is it's coming. Soon, my, my salvation, soon my salvation will come. It, it will come. It is guaranteeing us that if we do what God has commanded us to do, if we do justice, if we do righteousness, then the salvation of God, it is going to come and his righteousness, uh, it will, it will, it will be revealed. One more thing I want to touch on in this passage, and I won't hold you long tonight, but it also says in verse number two, blessed in is the man who does this. Blessed is the man who does this. Blessed is the man who does this. That word blessed, um, it means happy. It means fortunate. And it reminds me um, of a couple of passages of scripture um, that echo the same sentiment of the word blessed here in um, verse number two. Here it is in Psalms one. It talks about this same um, this same blessed individual, this same happy individual, this same fortunate individual. Listen at what the psalmist says. He says, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands uh, in the way of sinners, nor sits in the sea, seat of scoffers, um, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditate day and night. Look at this blessed man. He is like a tree planted by the streams of water and yields its fruit in its season, and its leaf does not wither. In all that he does, he prospers. And it gives that contrast of the person that's not blessed and the person that's not blessed. The not blessed person, you see that down through verses four through six. But here it is again. If you just do, um, if you're influenced by what God said he will do, it'll influence you um, to take and to keep God's word. And when you keep God's word, then you are going to be blessed. Look at Matthew chapter number five, verses three through 11. Um, listen at this. We call this the beatitude. It says, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. Blessed are those, blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on, on my on my account. One more. Verse 12 then says, Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Psalms 106, verse number three, this whole theme about blessed, and, and, and as our text talks about, blessed is the man who does this, puts you in mind of Psalms 1, Matthew chapter number 5, verses 3. Um, 3 through 12 is what we read for you. But then look at Psalms 106 and verse number 3. It says, blessed are they who observe justice, who do righteousness at all times. And so, brothers and sisters, what God is saying to us is that, listen, you, you can't allow the way others treat you uh, or how they don't treat you, how they mistreat you. You can't allow um, those things to take and to um, take and influence you. So one of the lessons here is that how others treat you should not determine how you treat them. And then another lesson here is that even if people don't treat you right, you treat them right. And we ask the question, uh, you know, why should we do this? Why should we do this? Why should we not allow how others treat us um, determine how we treat them. Why should we, why should we, um, um, if people um, don't treat us right, um, that we shouldn't turn around and not treat them right? Why, 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 why? Well, I told you anticipation of what he will do. 
The text says that his salvation, it shall come. It will come. His salvation will come. God is going to deliver them from where they're located. And listen, if you do what God tells you to do, whatever you are located, whatever you are, wherever you are located and whatever you are located in, God can deliver you out of it. If you take and do what his word instructs you to do, keep justice, do righteousness, and soon salvation will come. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for your word. I pray, God, that you give us the strength. Lord, I must admit there are times, Lord, where it's hard, Father, um, to keep your command to do justice and to keep uh, to do righteousness and keep justice. God, because, Lord, sometimes we do want to go eye for an eye and a two for a two. But, Lord, help us to be influenced by what you will do. And God, as we are influenced by what you will do and keep your commandments, we pray that your promises would manifest in our lives. God, as you do it, we'll give your name all of the honor, all of the glory, God, and all of the praise. Keep us, dear God. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Well, listen, let me thank you for tuning in and joining uh, us on tonight. We're so grateful every time you tune in, every time you uh, dial in, every time you log in. Um, to check out our triumphant Tuesdays in the Word. We are so grateful to God for you doing that and joining us. We want to encourage you that when you go on, that you would share it with a friend, um, like, um, let somebody know that we are on the air, on the line, on Tuesday or Tuesday evenings. Uh, we encourage you to do so. 7 o'clock p.m. We're here for our triumphant Tuesdays in the Word. Then we want to encourage you to do the same thing, um, to reach out and let your friends know Sunday mornings at 9 o'clock a.m., our virtual worship. Some of the saints of God have begun to come back to the sanctuary. We're grateful for them. But when you do come, remember to wear your mask, wear your mask, wear your mask. We want to make sure that we keep each other safe. Remember, let us continue to keep our divine obligations uh, by contributing, uh, by giving our tithe and our offering. You can uh, give by by texting to give. That phone number is going to be on the screen. We want to encourage you. Uh, just uh, type in that number. Text the word give to that number if it's your first time. And they will send you an instructions to follow in order to set up uh, your, your ability to give merely by texting on your phone. But then you can cash app the church. You can cash app the church. Many people have gotten into Cash App, and it's a wonderful, wonderful application if you're familiar with it. And that information is on the, on the screen below as well. Uh, not only can you text to give, Cash App, let's see, uh, you can also go to the church's website. You can go to the church's website and you can give that way as well. You can go to the church's website and give that way as well. Click on that tab that says Option, and then click on the Give tab and then follow those instructions on that particular page. Um, but then not only with texting to give, uh, Cash App, uh, not only uh, with the church's website, uh, but we want to also encourage you, you can call down to the church. Call down to the church and uh, make arrangements for dropping off, <clears throat> but also make arrangements uh, for picking up your, your donation. Uh, we just encourage you, please ma'am, please sir, let us govern yourselves accordingly. And uh, uh, I want you to stay safe. I want you to stay healthy. I want you to stay prayed up. Uh, we had the word as much as, uh, regardless of where you stand politically, um, we, we encourage all of those under the sound of my voice, pray for this country, pray for the world, uh, pray for the president of these United States. Um, God bless you, stay safe. Stay healthy and stay prayed up. I love you in Jesus. Peace.